Welcome to the I Didn't Know What the Fuck I Was Doing podcast. We're your hosts, Teresa and David. This is the podcast with two ADHD entrepreneurs who jumped into uncertain territory and made lots of unpleasant mistakes along the way. We were able to figure out what we're actually passionate about. And we are here to help you do the same. Each week, we will release two episodes discussing how we navigate our businesses, relationships, and health, as well as interview excellent guests who share their own personal IDKWTF stories. Listen today so you can hear some relatable content as we normalize uncertainty in business and in life. Because it's important to admit that no one really knows what the fuck they're doing. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So we've been exploring our business with COVID. Yeah. All the ins and outs. Yeah. So last one we talked about just our COVID story, which I feel like, again, everyone has a story of the COVID misery, right? Yeah. And so we talked about kind of what we went through, the troubles that we had. And I thought today we could talk about what's changed, especially in our businesses after COVID and I guess our personal life too, right? And then some things that people can do and implement in their own life and business Yeah. now that the world is completely different. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're in a whole new world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, turn on Aladdin and Jasmine and jam. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to sing that though. You don't want me to sing that. Oh. Was that song, <laughs> were any of those songs in the new Aladdin with Will Smith? You know what? See it. I actually haven't seen it either. Seen it? Oh, the fail. The live actions, I feel like it's so hit or miss whether I even want to see them. I didn't want to be disappointed. Right. Yeah. Cause I saw Lion King and it was so bad. See, I didn't see Lion King, but I've heard that it's bad. It was just, and, but on the other hand, mm-hmm. I liked Mulan. You can't think about Mushu though, because there's no I, Mushu. Mulan, see, that's Dan didn't like <laughs> the new Mulan either, but I looked at it from the perspective that I was just watching a whole new movie. It was okay. It was full of Dan, <laughs> but there's this girl on YouTube who started a channel. She's Asian Canadian, so she's Chinese Canadian. Okay. And she started a YouTube channel to roast Mulan and how inaccurate and how bad it was. <laughs> and she blew up to like a million subscribers. And I'm not now she's right. like a best selling author. And it's but it, she was so mad at it that she started her channel. Yeah. As so as tangent. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we are we are in a whole new world now yes. of co- after COVID, really. So yeah. So how is business been like the last six months, a year. Yeah. So things have definitely changed. I thought it was going to be completely different. Like I thought like as soon as things started opening up, people would be coming out because what I do is in-person mastermind events where they can come to my office and then we can chat in person, which is my favorite way to do it. And then I've done a hybrid where people can pop in online as well. Yeah. So we can be in the room in person and have our group online. And I think that's something every business really needs to have that. I think so. I just want to say, I feel like that's hard. It it was hard for the person running it, I think more than anything, because Mm -hmm. you're trying to focus like on your people online, but also one-on-one it's, it's a different feel. So anyway, I I commend you for like doing that. And I get that it's becoming normal and it's, it's different. Well, here's the benefit is that people are, are still not coming in person. (laughs) <laughs> they'll come online uh, and people will even message me before I went to mastermind events and they're like, Hey, you know, I haven't been there before. Can I tell my little bit about it? Or... Yeah. And they're like, I'm like, yeah, I can come in person or not. And they're like, I think I'll just jump in online. Fine. You know, what? don't hang out with me. It's interesting I want to see you anyway. because I think I love socially being with people in person. Yeah. But I think there's two big factors is one business on top, pajamas on the bottom. Right. There is something about being at home or you just don't turn your screen on at all. <laughs> and it's totally true. It, but to me, it's just like the in-person, the, the energy of a mastermind group is more powerful in person. The it's energy still of any human interaction, I feel like is yeah. more powerful in person. Yeah. And so I think that's where, I think there's definitely some people who still have a fear about being with people they don't know in a large group, those kinds of things, which I totally get and respect. Yeah. And I think some of us are just like, well, it'd be easier. I don't have to get ready. I don't have to get dressed. I don't have to. Yeah. And actually I will say, and I'm like mad that people aren't coming to mind. I'm not going to events at all. And it's not because I'm scared to, I just, I'm so introverted for one. So it was like, it took me a lot of work to get myself out to these anyways. Mm -hmm. Then after two years of not being able to do anything, the 
trying to get myself to go to some networking event downtown. I'm just like, nah. <laughs> yeah. It's like in theory, I mean, I love people. I'm yeah. extroverted and there's still, for me, it's like that. So I can't mm -hmm. imagine the introverts <laughs> that are in the same position because mm -hmm. like, you're naturally like happier being alone right. <laughs> or with one person, not with a big group. Yeah. So, so it's, it's taking some effort to like get back out there. So that's kind of like the main thing. Mm -hmm. I also definitely noticed there's more demand for people wanting to learn how to do their own business stuff. You can even see it. Like I mentioned in the last episode with network marketing, like ne network marketing is booming right now mm -hmm. because so many people know that they need to do something else to make more money. Right. Well, do you find that, is there a certain type of business or is it just all sorts of businesses that you've noticed? Either it's coaching a skill um, or like turning a hobby into a business or turning, like teaching the hobby into a business. So like one of my clients, he's a beekeeper, right? And beekeeping is one of those things that's going away. But so he's trying to turn the teaching of the art of beekeeping mm. into a company. That's fascinating. Other, another gentleman was doing like a teaching men's fashion or like plus size men. Right. So that was one, another thing. And just, yeah, just taking the skill that you have and turning it. And finding a way to like market it and sell it yeah. as something that people could use or would want to use. I mean, like beekeeping. I mean, my sister-in-law just got her own hive up oh, in the wow. mountains. Yeah. Man. I think that's really cool. And I think there's a call for some of these random trades or, I mean, people just have any, these skill sets yeah. that we don't and think about. That's the key, right? Like kind of, we mentioned before, it's like, how do you take your, this thing that you're passionate about? And then figure out, okay, now I got to build a website and now I got to like social media market and like, who do I talk to and what right. do I do? Like, who's going to buy from me? Where there's a huge market out there for like literally anything. That's true. It's I mean. Getting to it. Yeah. Also, I feel like my ADHD brain is like, ooh, I'm going to start about beekeeping today. <laughs> 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 like, <Yeah>. like <laughs> but I think that's, I mean, how do you find the thing that lights you up that like makes your heart happy? By experimenting, by learning a few yeah. things here or there and figuring out what really like makes you happy and lights you up. Yeah. The, the flip side of that though, what I noticed is that even though there's more interest and more people are wanting to like branch out and make money doing their own thing. Yeah. I find the flake rate is higher. So people who are like really interested, really want to do it, they drop off faster than they used to. Hmm. So it was like the turnover in my mastermind group is, is higher. Why do you think that? Do you think, do you have an, a theory? I think it's because there are more choices now, um, because now everything is virtual and everyone's got some kind of online course or program or something, mm -hmm. which is what I love about Colorado mastermind is the in-person part, right? Because I think it's just the depth of what can be done in person is so much higher. Yeah. But yeah, I think there's just more options and it's either option overwhelm. Like people have so many choices now that they do none of them, you know, just trying different things. Like decision fatigue is a real, yeah. real thing. Exactly. And I think also just in general, stress is higher everywhere. Right. And so kind of like you were talking about, like you've got all these things going on in your household. How are you going to focus on your business? Right. Like it's, that's the one thing because it's not for sure. It. We, you don't know if it's going to work or not work. It's right. Like, that's the first thing that gets pushed to the side. Totally. Yeah. When you're not, when it's not making a steady, significant income mm -hmm. at that point, especially as a brand new entrepreneur exactly. um, or a brand new business, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Like it's interesting because that's, that's the benefit of the network marketing company is yeah. there's more stability and there's more like proof of concept. It's like, okay, I like these products. Yeah. I can just go sell these products because I see all these other people making you know, five, six figures doing it when it's like your own thing, your own baby that you want to create your profits way higher. Cause now you're getting all of the money, but like, and you the, can design it however you want and you can do whatever it is that you think is right. Yeah. But there's so much more unknown that it's easier to just get rid of. I definitely know that game <laughs> right? from both sides. I definitely know that. So Absolutely. yeah. Tell me about yourself, like kind of what's been going on post COVID. Well, as I mentioned at the end of part one of this podcast, August of 2021, I just realized how exhausted I was and that the idea of jumping back into my business, it just 
it was not settled. Like I, I started to kind of make a plan and it felt icky. It was like an instinct almost. Something was really pushing against. And I said, okay, I'm going to give myself about six months mm -hmm. and just evaluate later. Not a hard date. I was just like, let's just see. Let's just focus on my kids getting back into being at school every day. What does that look like in our routines? You know, mm -hmm. we're all different after COVID. Come like the beginning of February, I was like, okay, it's been about six months. Do I want to do anything with this? Mm -hmm. And I kind of was like, I don't know. Let me just see what happens. Yeah. I'm not going to plan anything. Yeah, that's not a very great way to like to, be an entrepreneur and have a business. Sure. Like doing nothing is not going to change what's happening. Right. But I think I just wasn't, I wasn't ready to commit to a business plan still. I just didn't want to do anything at all. Yeah, I totally get it. And I think, well, over the holidays, like it's holidays. There was a lot of stuff going on with family and the kids and all that. Then you called and said, hey, are you still interested in doing a podcast? Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, I don't know exactly what it would be about yet. Like I have an idea. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's interesting how you had talked about in part one, how you and Anastasia coming together to create this podcast mm -hmm. opened something new up for both of you. Yeah. Kind of reinvigorated you at a time where you didn't even realize kind of how in it you were. Right. And I think for me, I've known that I'm in it. I think I just didn't know how to like get myself yeah. excited again. Yeah. Like that's because for me, I want to be excited about my business. Yeah. Like I know not every single piece is going to be the most exciting thing, but I've got to be passionate about it. Right. And so you being like, well, what do you want to do with your business? What are you, what are you up to in life? And it was like, oh, what do I want to be up to? And I feel excited nice. about my business again. Good. Yeah. So thought, yeah, high five. <laughs> Thanks for calling me, David. <laughs> you know, and that's something I always say is like the world works exactly the way it needs to, right? Uh, like things happen the way they need to happen. Um, and yeah, and it's not like it was planned. I was just like, okay, we need to do season two and the stage is off doing her other thing. I was like, I still want to continue the podcast because it's good for me as well. And I was like, who of all the people can I call and be like, Hey, uh, let's do this thing. And you were literally the only person I think that I would have done this with. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, when you reached out to me and I was like, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Me? <laughs> yeah. It, it's very much like a super good feel good. Yeah. And I'm excited. I feel like it was the right fit. It was the right timing. I feel like both of us have gone through whatever we needed to the last couple of years. And yeah. I'm glad that we can partner in this way and yeah. get ourselves excited about what's going on for the future of both of our businesses individually yeah. and creating this podcast together and like mm -hmm. having fun with it. Right. Yeah. Learning new skills, having fun. I love it. Yes. Yeah, fun. Cool. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <-ya. laughs> well, good. I think it's about time for a message from our sponsors. Let's do it. Our really good looking sponsors. They're very good looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty awesome. This is a podcast for anyone looking to improve their personal, professional, or family life. We craft these episodes so you can learn from or relate to our experiences and opinions. And we'd love to hear more about you. So if you're interested in connecting with us further, as well as other like-minded individuals, we recommend checking out our creatively named Facebook group, Colorado Entrepreneurs. You don't have to be from Colorado or be an entrepreneur to join, but it doesn't hurt. Just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Colorado biz. That's B I Z and send us a join request or check the link in the description and show notes below. Thanks for listening. And now back to the show. Go back. Welcome. Thanks for listening to our wonderful, beautiful sponsors. <laughs> yes. All right. We were talking about just what it's been like for like the last six to nine months or so here in our businesses, where we're going, what we're doing, that we're both like excited and we're noticing like some changes or making changes or, yeah. and I feel like that's like the normal place to be right now for everybody. Absolutely. And then, so I thought we could talk about kind of like what's coming up and like what some of our listeners can do because yeah. we're in this like absolute insane time right now so it's it's may right so it's may <laughs> yes, it's may it's the middle of may <laughs> i had to think about it too though you're asking and i'm laughing not because you asked if it's may and it's may 16th so it's the middle of may yeah but because i had to think about it for the second too much time oh. it's a lot of time time and adhd but 
yeah, so it's just, it's crazy because like inflation is at a record high. Gas prices are out of control. Like I've, I've got a diesel. It's 525 for a diesel, which is ridiculous. That's insane. Interest rates are all going up and they're going to continue to go up. And so we're in this time once again, where it's not like COVID where everything is shut down. Yeah. Everything's just getting more expensive and our dollars are going less far and employers aren't paying as much. This. So <laughs> we're at, again, a crazy time where we know we're not stable. We know that we need something else to make more money. Yeah. Something has to change. Like it's going, it's going to change. And it's like, we also have to make our own changes because if gas prices stay this high, if and the cost of housing stays this high, if, I was like, it can't. It, I don't know how it can, like, I don't know. know. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Right. It's like, yeah. It's a very unclear economic time, which is the first time since the downturn of 2008, once we came back up from that, mm -hmm. we just been soaring along. Yeah. The longest growth in the history of the United States. Right. And so it, it doesn't last forever. We had a little bit of a correction back in 2020, but again, we've had record stock prices, right? So, you know, it's the middle of May. This will probably be released in June. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen in that time. Right. But I right. know it's like day by day right now. It's like some days, like stuff is, is, is going to happen. Yeah. So the thing is we need to be ready we need a way to make income. That's not necessarily our primary job or our primary business. What are some things people can do to either prepare themselves for what could potentially be coming or just because they want to make some more money because everything's crazy expensive. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I have friends who've learned coding and learning, mm -hmm. you know, how to make apps and learning programming. And because yeah. that's something that seems to be like, okay, everybody's going to need that. We're going to keep needing that. Yeah. We're going to need more advancements. We're going to make more apps. Facebook is definitely like inundating me with ads of like, learn to program, learn to do this, learn to do that. How funny. Mine will be too. Now that we're yeah, talking now. about it, <laughs> my cell phone's in the room. It's different. My cell phone heard us talking about it. Yeah. Now I'm going to get all the ads. There you go. <laughs> so just picking up any kind of new skill, right? Yeah. And that people can pay for. Even like flying drones is like a new big thing too. That's out there. Uh, and that'd be a fun hobby. Right. Or a fun skill to get paid for. Totally. Well, I feel like there's some things that feel like fun and like flying a drone could absolutely be one of those things. And if people are going to pay you to do it, I mean. Yeah. And actually I get paid to test uh, virtual reality games on my Oculus. So and it's not a lot, but they, every couple of weeks they hit me up and I play test. And so there's a lot of like little things. If it's a hobby of yours that you can get paid to do it. Right. So if you're already going to be playing a video game, but then you got to try a new one and give your feedback on it, mm. but you're getting paid to do what you would have been doing in your downtime anyway. That's so much fun. Yeah. Totally. Like taking hobbies or skill sets mm. and making them into businesses. Absolutely. And then, so you had also mentioned like another really good way to make some more money by just asking for a rate. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was like. Just ask your boss. Yeah. I mean, the corporations they have it yeah because everything costs so much our money is going somewhere like most of these bigger corporations where you work like they have money most yeah. of them absolutely because so, they're um because they have less staff right because a lot of people either quit or got laid off and just didn't come back to work right so right. there's positions open if on your team there were five people before and now there's three the three is all of that extra payroll yeah then chances are you're not getting paid Right. More. Chances are you're not getting paid. I mean, and that's a huge discrepancy of like, we're watching prices of everything soar mm -hmm. and then we're not getting paid. Right. I was talking to my brother-in-law who works up in the, in the mines up here in Colorado. He's like the McDonald's in Steamboat pays like $20 an hour to start. He's like, we pay $30 an hour, but their job is super high risk. What is, what? Is he like he's a, the he pickaxe in the coal mines? <laughs> what well, does he do in a mine? Do? He doesn't do that. Like you know, honestly, like it is physical labor. I, yeah, I honestly does. never asked him exactly what it looks like to be down there. Yeah, but it's like I do you would I think said. doing a job that's like dangerous, you well, would get much more. Yep. Right, and I mean, their schedule is rough. The way they do things, like is is crazy, mm -hmm. and 
he's like, that's the problem we're having though, is no one will come work. And even though it pays good, he's like, then when other McDonald's or wherever is going to pay their employees better, which is what we want. Right. So do all the other jobs. Absolutely. They need to go up too, and they're not. Right. And we're having that as a big problem. So it's like, yeah, you got to ask for that raise. And then I have known people who like ask and they do get a raise. Yeah. The company has it. It's crazy to me that the argument against paying uh, frontline workers like $20 an hour or the $15 that they were going for. Right. Is like, Which is still not enough money. Yeah. Like if you work a 40 hour job at $15 an hour, it's not going to pay all your bills. Yeah. But the argument is like, well, I went to college, I've got this job and I only make $20 an hour. Why should they make $15 an hour? Because the corporation should be paying you more money. That's yeah. No one makes that argument. Like I should also make more money. Right. They could They're like, why that. would you make more money? I only make this. Right. They're like, don't hire minimum wage. Yes. Hire minimum wage, but also hire everybody. Hire all of the agents. Yeah. If you work at a skilled, specialized job, mm -hmm. you should be making a lot more. And when we think, oh, well, only CEOs make that kind of money or only executives make 50 or 60 or $70 an hour. Well, maybe that's the problem well, is that. So there's a stat out there. People think that like a CEO makes maybe 10 to 20 times what the frontline workers make. It's like it's so 300 weird. times. It's crazy that if we're bumping up minimum wage, then everyone else's wages should be bumped up too. It should be a parallel because the people who have worked really hard, who've worked in their jobs, who've worked their way up mm -hmm. and then they're like, yeah, I only make $5 more and I could just go work at McDonald's. I would have no stress. I wouldn't have to work overtime. I wouldn't, I mean, <laughs> well, in as much as McDonald's was- I personally could not work at McDonald's I, because I couldn't handle it. I have no urge to work at McDonald's. Either. I also couldn't be a server because it's funny. Like that's just, to me, that's a really stressful job. Like I love and working I, in a I, restaurant when I worked in a restaurant. I don't, I don't want like, to, and I love to be. I don't know, maybe that's a social part of me though. Then that's probably a fact. Get to make new best friends with every yeah. day we meet. And the it's, bestier friends you can get, the better tip you get. Yeah. But also that's so messed up about serving too, is they only make uh, yeah. two, three dollars. And I'll do a whole episode on like, on this. <laughs> yeah, because this that's is definitely not. Say. You're triggered on this one. Apparently <laughs> we are, we are. Okay, so you could ask for a raise. Also, if your boss doesn't want to give you a raise, David pointed out, so smart. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go get hired somewhere else. Go apply yeah. and get hired and see what they're going to offer you and then take it to your employer and go, I'm offered this. Yeah. So I actually match it, go above it, do what can you do for me? Or I put in my two weeks. Yeah. I just had this conversation with a friend actually. She works as a in a vet clinic. I don't know exactly her position. Mm -hmm. But they're understaffed, right? She's doing the job of like three people. She's not getting paid more. And she's constantly beyond stressed. And I told her, I was like, you should go just go apply somewhere else. Like go see what someone else will pay you. And what she told me, she's like, well, I don't want to go work anywhere else. Like, that's okay. You don't have to. Yeah, because you like your company you work for, you like the people you work with, whatever the case might be, right? But, and she has that loyalty to the company that she doesn't want to ruffle the feathers or try and like mm. do anything, but they have the payroll to pay her. She's yeah, doing if she's work. doing the work of three people and they're not rehiring or they just can't rehire. I think a yeah. lot of companies are finding they're they're trying to fill positions. Dan has a position open that's been open since the end of September mm -hmm. and there's like crickets. Yeah. And it's, but if, if a company doesn't have the incentive, if they're like, Hey, you're doing the work and we're paying you this much and we're not at risk of losing you, why would we pay you more? Right. And so it's just, Hey, go apply somewhere else. See what your market value is. Right. You don't have to take it, but just go see, you know? Yeah. And then if it's a better offer, then you get, then you have choice, right? You can either go work for someone else, which might be better staffed, better benefits, better, a better environment. Yeah. Or you can take that to your current boss and say, Hey, I don't want to quit, but this is what they're offering me. I need you to at least match this. Otherwise I have to, because everything is more expensive. Right. Because I can't afford to live and I love this company and I didn't even want to do this. Right. Like, and you can actually say that to your employer. You can actually say, I did not want to do this. Right. I didn't, I don't want to leave and go somewhere else. Exactly. But yeah, for sure. So let's say someone doesn't have the time to learn a new skill. Maybe they're not in a position where they can get a raise at their job. What else, what else can they do? 
I mean, all of us have a skill set, right? So you can become a social media influencer. Oh, oh, start that OnlyFans, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Or maybe something um, a little more PG. Yeah, maybe something a little more PG. I think <laughs> OnlyFans tried to branch out into other things. It didn't really work. It really didn't. I yeah. really, that was one I thought I was like, okay. People want to go to their own. OnlyFans for what they go yeah. to their OnlyFans for. Because I like to follow <laughs> trends, right? So like fitness influencers are big on OnlyFans, just, just real fitness. Yeah. And so is fashion. The logical next step, this is the iteration that TikTok went through, mm. is coaches. Like co the coaching industry then is the next group that picks up these social media things and then blows it up. And then it goes to everyone else. But the coaches never picked up OnlyFans. Mm. Well, I think because OnlyFans, there's just a it's stigma a of what it what it's for. Exactly. And it's for physical uh, yeah, I think and sexual. <laughs> and well, I mean, and that's what it's known for. Like yeah. when you hear like an OF and if you're like, what's OF? It's OnlyFans. And people are referring it to OF because they don't want other people to hear that they're either a creator on OF or whatever, because yeah. a lot of times it is sexual in nature. I'm actually going to say though, I do really support OnlyFans because it's actually giving power back to the women who want to be in sex work, whether it's just showing off their bodies or whatever they're doing. Because before it's like the main companies like Pornhub, it's a male dominated industry that really exploits women. And that's been shown over and over. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about OnlyFans is you can be, you can show what you want to show in the comfort of your own home and you're running it yourself. It's your own business. Just, yeah, exactly. Right. So I think it's much safer and healthier in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. If that's, if that's the, if that's the business that you're choosing to be in, yeah. like you should make money for yourself. I mean, seriously, I feel like that's, that's the way for everything. Like mm -hmm. even the creators are leaving Etsy in the art world. They're leaving oh. Etsy because yeah. Etsy, I it, just raised the Etsy is price. taking more yeah. money from creators. So <laughs> creators are having to bump up their prices to the people that buy from them. But what's happening is creators are like, well, I have an Etsy, but I'm getting my website set up. I'm yeah. getting it set up. So because they're already making their product, packaging it, selling it. Yeah. And they may have a successful Etsy business, but that's like, it's a big thing in the art world right now of like, oh, nope, I got to make my own site. And they still have to market anyways, right? So then they, if they just grow their TikTok following or they grow whatever social media presence. Yeah. That's what they have to do to make money anyway. So Absolutely. Do it on your own site. Right. And that's, I had a friend who was like, I want to start an Etsy. Like I've always wanted to do that. And I'm like, in relation to certain Etsy, like you should just make your own site. So you could make an Etsy and have that. And you could also have your own site so that that way Etsy can expose you a little bit. If someone's doing a search for something that you do and they come across your page. Yeah. Great. But it, I feel like that's what it should be used for more as it. I bet a great thing too, is if you do sell something on Etsy, put like a coupon that directs people back to your main site and say, hey, 10% off of my main site if you buy it from here. With right. I, yeah. I don't know what the rules are on Etsy and all that, but I'm like. I get that kind of thing, like in my Amazon packages all the time and they're like, yeah. or they want a review or something, but I just think, yeah, use Etsy as a yeah. one thing and then redirect. Totally. Yeah. But I think also influencing is interesting because you, like you can make some money, but it's very inconsistent. I mean, you know. If you have a cleaning TikTok or something and Tide wants to sponsor you, like, heck yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. So becoming an influencer, right? That's something where you're just videotaping something you're passionate about. And you're just, the key is you have to be consistent. To be consistent and you have to get the, the following base to like mm -hmm. actually start following you. But that a lot of times on different social media, it's like you literally are spending your life on social media. You're posting Connect everything. Thing. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of those people, like this TikTok's a perfect example. I've seen more people make, just be, make more money than ever expected just because they went viral for, for one thing. They keep up the, whether they like making a skit or they're showing off what they actually do at work or they show off their art, right? They get brand deals. They can then sell merchandise. Oh yeah. You can do like partnerships with other, with other social media influencers. I follow a lot of art creators on Instagram. Okay. And like, I've seen a couple of them get some pretty cool deals. Yeah. And it's just because they've been sharing their art through Instagram Yeah. and they've been doing their own thing and selling that. But then I've watched their like brand grow. They built a brand yeah. from a hobby that they used to just share. 
on the it, internet, which is cool. To me, it's like, why would you go back working at McDonald's if you can make money showing off a thing that you love on social media? Right. right? When you just spend all your time doing that art or doing whatever it yeah. is that yeah, lights you up. You get six figure brand deals and you're not flipping burgers, you know, to ungrateful customers. Right. People are wondering, like, where are all the workers? Doing something else, <laughs> you know? No one wants to work anymore. It's like, no, no, we just don't want to work. Faithless job. jobs, people. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Shitty jobs. That's exactly <laughs> it. Shitty jobs or shitty pay or just like yeah. the crap that you get put through and some high stress. I mean, teacher burnout is a real thing. I mean, I'm sort of afraid for what's going to happen over the next five years in the world of yeah. academics because I really don't want to teach my kid. You're right. I love them. I just, that's not, I want my teachers. Please, teachers, I, I love think, you, but because teacher burnout is real and they're important. Education is so important. And if you don't treat them right, they burn out and they're tired and spray. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah, totally. What's a, a big final thing people can do? Uh, uh, well, you can do what we do, which is start your own business. <laughs> yeah. So with an existing skill set, like I said, you have some sort of skill set already, right? So what skills do you have? Do you have beekeeping skills? Do you have fashion skills? Do you have cooking skills? Like um, what, what do you love? Gardening skills. Gar yeah. Or even like teaching art, right? Like if someone loves doing art, they can teach it on like, mm -hmm. that's, there's a high demand for that. Totally. Singing. People love, like, cause we live in this world now where we don't necessarily want to learn from the experts. It's like, this person has this credential on blah, blah, and they went to the blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'd rather learn from someone who's doing it, who's like, has the experience. They might not have a credential of going to some school, mm -hmm. but if I want to learn how to do art, like if I want to learn how to oil paint, I would much rather learn from someone who just loves oil painting. Who loves oil painting and who's willing and has the patience to like, yeah, teach you. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be way, I think the experience would be a different experience. Mm -hmm. And people like that. And I think people do want to support small business, support, support As creators. They want to support someone locally. Like if I can find some cool handmade jewelry and it's a girl that lives on the other side of the Denver metro area, then I'm going to go drive and meet her to pick up earrings. If, you right. know, if I need them quick and I'm like, Hey, can you help me out? Like I've actually done that before where I'm like, Hey, I want to give this as a gift. Okay. And she literally like, we live across town we met and like. But it's like, I also, so I got to support her. She was willing to work with me when I needed it. And I've reordered from her since nice. because okay. I want to support my local artists, like yeah. people that are living in the area I'm living in, like <laughs> that gives you options. But I think where people might get stuck is in the marketing it. Yeah. Cause like, how do I build my social media? How do I right. do this? Where do, what do I do? What do I go? And I think that lends itself to a couple different things. One of which is like joining a mastermind group like Absolutely. Colorado mastermind or like another group in your area any kind of community right uh, a Facebook group David and I have a Facebook group specifically for entrepreneurs I mean just saying <laughs> <laughs> I can always check that one out you know but it really is it, shameless it, plug well a shameless plug but it's like the idea is really to be able to support each other and help each other mm -hmm. in our community so another thing is so a lot of people listen to the, like motivational podcasts or motivational like YouTube videos. Yeah. What I actually think is more helpful for people who who want to start a business is like more of a like a how to course or how to podcasts that teach the actual practical skills of okay, how to implement X, Y, and Z, whether it's setting up a landing page or figuring out how to market. Mm -hmm. It can be frustrating and overwhelming, but if you have like the a template yeah. to do, it makes it much easier. Oh, yeah. And then if you do have a coach, it makes it even easier for that. So yeah. uh, I sort of feel like that's what you did for me. Mm -hmm. We met, I mean, virtually at, at the time we met a, a few times and set up all just the things the and you, you coached me through it and said, yeah. okay, here's what you should set up next. Here's what you should set up next. A lot of us, we get so overwhelmed. Yeah. So if you take a course that is explaining to you, Hey, for your business, here's how to set up. I think it's magical. It just makes it so much easier. Right. I think a lot of people too, who haven't thought about it, like, what am I going to teach? Who's going to buy from me? But the, honestly, if you create something like we mentioned before, I'd rather buy from my friend yeah. or be, learn something from a friend who can teach me 
if they have it set up. Yeah. So I was laughing because I was just thinking of, um, have you ever seen Field of Dreams? Yeah. If yeah. you build it, they will come. Yeah. Like it, it's true. Yeah. I as mean, long as you let them know that it's there. That's the key. Yes. If you <laughs> build it in a corner by yourself where nobody yeah. can see you, they will not come. Right. <laughs> if you build it in a corner by yourself and you put it on some social media and you tell people what you're doing, they will come. Yeah. <laughs> I think, and that's like a big thing. I think people are always surprised when they get that first sale and they're like, wow. It's, it's the best feeling for me to watch that happen. Yeah. Well, someone believed in me. Exactly. Someone is excited to work with me. Someone wants what I have to offer. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's exciting. It's cool. Well, I think that covers kind of all the, yeah, at least some options anyway. And it's just, things are definitely hard out there for everyone at the moment. Yeah. Almost everyone. It's just, the world is in chaos. It is. It's uneasy. We don't know what's going to happen. So pair yourself yeah as best as you can mm -hmm. and uh if you're not sure where to start you can always reach out to me and david seriously like oh. we're happy to chat with you and you can direct message us right in our facebook group seriously yeah so do it do it do it all right well i think we ran a little long on this episode but thanks for joining us thanks for listening yeah we hope it provided value and uh we'll see you next time have a good day guys bye Thank you for listening. This has been the conclusion of our two-part series. And hey, congrats for making it here. If you didn't happen to catch part one, just go back to the previous episode to get the full story. It was a really good one. If you enjoyed today's conversation, please consider liking, subscribing, and or reviewing us on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, if there's someone you know who clearly doesn't know what the fuck they're doing and would benefit from this topic, please hit that share button and send them this episode. Let's normalize the feeling of uncertainty, asking for help, and admitting that we don't know what the fuck we're doing either. either.